So in this video, I'll explain how to develop themes from codes and specifically I will focus on questions that I usually ask myself when I'm stuck with my codes and I'm not sure how to develop themes from these codes. And uh, so if that's what you're experiencing at the moment, don't worry because uh, this in fact is a very, very common problem. And every week I talk to students who come to me with this uh, specific problem. They are not sure they have their codes. They are not sure how to develop themes from these codes. How, how do I name the themes? How do I decide what is a theme in the first place? So all of these things are something that I will cover in this video. You may also be interested in my previous videos uh, called how codes become themes. They will be either here or here. Um, in this video, I will not talk about coding or how to use software or anything like that. So if you, if you want to uh, learn about coding and these previous steps, then feel free to watch some other videos. In this video, I just particularly want to focus only on how do we decide what, uh, which codes will become themes and how do, we, how do we turn these codes into themes. So the very first thing to understand, I think, about uh, themes before you move on to trying to develop these themes from your data is uh, what themes are and how they how they are developed in fact so one thing that i always say is that you have to understand that it's this moment this moment where you're at the mo at the moment this moment when you're at the moment uh, is a very uh, responsible one a very creative one as well but uh, but it's probably why so many people feel anxious because it's, there is so much responsibility in this very moment and and what kind of themes you will develop and later describe and discuss will uh, depend 100% on you and your judgment. So that's, that's very important. It's not like uh, science or quantitative research where you may apply certain, you know, certain equations or, or statistical tests that will show you uh, certain themes. They will show you this is a theme and this is a theme to consider. There's nothing like that, of course, in qualitative research. So so what themes you end up having will entirely depend on you and your judgment and this in turn so so this judgment if you're wondering how do i judge how do i make that decision will of course depend on your study so your research questions and what you want to uh, find out from your study and later what you want to uh, explain and tell uh, your readers and, and examiners or whoever is going to be reading your work so in that process, we are utilizing what we have in terms of codes, what we have in our data, because codes essentially, they are a way of, um, of communicating to us what we have in our data. So we are utilizing what we have in our data and thinking about our research questions and thinking how what we have in our data will contribute to answering these research questions. This means in practice that uh, depending on, on you may, uh, on depending on what you're focusing on in your study, you may have the same kind of data, the exact same data set. And depending on what research questions you're asking, your themes will be different. So in other words, if you have, if you have the same data set and there are two people, one of them is focusing on one thing in their study and the other person is using the same data set and focusing on another thing, of course, the themes that will be developed by these two people will be different. So it's not like, again, so it's not science. It doesn't mean that uh, this particular data set determines certain themes. No, it's you, again, as I said, uh, who decides what themes I will have from this data. So just to give you a very brief example of what I mean, let's imagine that we have, we have two studies. So in study number one, uh, I want to find out about uh, the migrants uh, self-esteem. So I want to understand their self-esteem, how we define it, how it's constructed, what factors contribute to building that self-esteem or per perhaps what barriers they face. And then there is a second researcher who uh, focuses on a different thing. Using the same data set, they want to find out why migrants change their jobs frequently. So so possibly why they, why they leave their jobs. So in the study number one, if they talk to me about uh, negative experiences they had at work, uh, I may at some point decide, so I'll code this, I'll code these negative experiences at work or maybe failed communication at work or whatever. And I may decide later that one of the, when I think about my thematic framework, if I have a lot in my data, if I have a lot of stuff about uh, experiences or factors that contribute to uh, building uh, self-esteem or that affect that self-esteem, I may code some of these uh, extracts about work experiences. I may, let's say I have a, I have a theme factors affecting self-esteem and then uh, some of these extracts may be coded as let's say negative experiences at work or failed communication at work so this will be like a sub theme from 
uh, of my uh, main theme, which is factors affecting self-esteem. And the second researcher who wants to find out about uh, factors uh, contributing to the migrants changing uh, jobs so frequently uh, will probably use the same data, the same extracts, but will organize these themes differently. So, so perhaps he or she will want to dig deeper, so to speak, into because the study is about why will uh, why they leave uh, their jobs frequently. So maybe that person will dig deeper and will use the same extracts, but break them down further. So for example, uh, he or she may have a theme called uh, reasons for leaving work or reasons for changing jobs. And then they will list these reasons. So, so perhaps uh, failed communication at work, I don't know, failing to, uh, to form social ties at work, to make friends at work. So, so they will be using the same extracts and they will be looking as, uh, at different things. So they will want to list all these factors. Their study wants to know what are these factors? Why do they uh, change jobs? For me, uh, it's just one of the, of the things. So in my study of self-esteem, it's just all these extracts about, about work, I may or may not, but you know, I could decide that I don't really need to go into that much detail. So for me, it will be just like uh, work experiences or maybe even negative experiences. So, so that kind of shows you how you can use the same uh, data set and, and go into two completely different directions. So this leads me to the questions that I ask myself when I want to develop themes. So after I have coded my data, usually there is a point when uh, I find myself looking at all these codes and wondering how I develop my thematic framework. Again, if you want to know a little bit more about this process, uh, have a look at these previous videos in which I also talk specifically about having this coding framework and, and how, we how I decide how I move things around and how I turn them into themes. But now uh, in this video, like I said, from this more, let's say abstract level, not necessarily what I do in the software, but what kind of questions am I asking? I'm looking at this data and the first question that I usually ask myself is what is that data really telling me about my research questions? So what is my data telling me about my research questions? It may sound obvious, but uh, quite often it's, it's not obvious. We, uh, we tend to feel overwhelmed with the, uh, the amount of data that we have and we sometimes forget that this is our main aim to simply answer the research questions. Uh, by this time, usually you're quite familiar with your data. So you've, you've done all the coding, you've reviewed your coding. So you, you have seen all these extracts. So you should have a good idea of what there is in the data. So, so this simple question, just to kind of uh, stand back and look at your coding framework and think, what are, uh, what's all of this uh, have to do with my, with my research questions? What have I learned? What is it telling me? What kind of a story is it telling me uh, in terms of answering my research questions? So as I said, there is, uh, depending on the perspective, there are so many things in each data set. And then again, if you, as I always say, if your participants go, uh, go off topic quite a lot, if you have a lot of stuff, uh, some of that more or some of, less, uh, or some of that less relevant to your research question, this actually means that you have achieved success because it means that your part participants were talkative. Uh, Arguably, there was good report. They felt at ease, so they talked a lot. So, so don't worry about that because people ask me sometimes what I do, what I do if they there is so much data and not all of it is relevant to my research question. It's good if it's not relevant because again, it says that they felt comfortable and they talked to you a lot. But now, you do have to think which parts are relevant and what have I learned about the research questions. And the second uh, kind of question, the second set of questions. Uh, and bear in mind that it uh, doesn't have to happen one after the other. I just usually uh, ask myself all kinds of questions at, at once. So the second set of questions is how do I communicate what I learned to others? So how do I tell the reader this story? How do I explain what I found? And what would I tell somebody at this very moment if they ask me, what have you found from your data? So like I said, these questions are really related. So. Uh, Usually what I do at this point, the first thing I do is, is like a mental ex exercise. Uh, I'm just, uh, sometimes I just switch my computer off and just go for a walk. And basically what, I, what I'm doing, I'm thinking about my data and trying to answer the, the first set of questions that I mentioned. So I just want to understand myself before deciding how to communicate this to the reader. I need to understand what I learned. So again, thinking about my research questions and just wondering, okay, what do I know? Surely I, I do have to have some understanding of my data now because 
is that point when I when I need to talk about the results. So what do I really know about the research uh, research questions? How would I answer them uh, at this uh, point in time? So uh, so what I do also quite often, I imagine myself talking to somebody, so family member or even like a, a group of people or a classroom or whatever, or I even imagine presenting at a conference and I'm just thinking, what would I tell them now in let's say one minute or two minutes? So the key things about, about my findings, what would that be? And as I do this, as I'm thinking about that, that story or how I would present it to somebody, uh, the reason it's so important and so useful is because as you do that, you tend to think in themes basically. So as you summarize, it's the same as you, uh, when you summarize a movie to your friend or you summarize your day at school to, to your family member, usually, we, we tend naturally tend to think in themes because themes are just topic general topics and general you know patterns and what happened what was uh, being said so the same thing happens here as you think about as you reflect on how I would communicate it to let's say a class of a group of people I tend to think in themes I try to pack all that information and and present it in a nice and clear way and this is exactly what you will think uh, what you will need uh, to develop your themes and another thing that may help uh, and I have a separate video here or here I have no idea uh, about this is a free writing so that's uh, an exercise I won't go into details uh, here but it's an exercise in which you just for two or three or five minutes you're just writing about something in this case about your findings so just watch that video and that's the, the idea is the same as with that mental exercise so basically we're just writing and trying to understand first what have i learned before uh, before deciding how i communicate that to my audience so once i answer these questions and quite often i'm like i said i uh, is during a walk outside uh, once I answer these questions, I go back home and I start to look at my data and think, uh, is it possible to organize my data into, into this kind of uh, setup, into these themes? Because again, just, just to repeat, uh, it's very important when you think about how I would present it to somebody and one, what have I, have I learned from my data, uh, what you are doing naturally is thinking in terms of themes. So then go back home and try to organize your uh, codes in that way so try to fit them into the categories that you were just thinking uh, about when you're thinking how you would present uh, that data of course this is not to say that uh, you want to force things into categories if they are if there is no evidence in your data for uh, for how you want to organize it then of course do not attempt to do so maybe you want to think uh, go go outside again and think think about it again but basically of course as long as there is evidence as long as there is uh, supporting data you are free to organize your data the way you want the main point is to again answer the research questions and explain this clearly to your audience and then the final question that sometimes I ask myself is uh, after I, I attempted to organize the data into themes uh, I look at the thematic framework and I said that before in one of my videos I'm asking a question I'm asking questions about that thematic framework so basically I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm asking questions is it clear enough if I wasn't uh, here if I wasn't here to explain this thematic framework to somebody would this thematic framework be clear enough for them to understand to make sense of, of what's here because that's my number one criterion for thematic frameworks uh, without explanations they should more or less tell the reader a story of your data so if the answer is yes if the thematic framework is clear and I believe that it's perfectly understandable by uh, understandable I'm not sure if that's the right word here but it's clear and easy to understand by by somebody neutral somebody uh, who doesn't know uh, to whom I wouldn't explain what's in that thematic framework that means that this framework is good to me so that's that's my number one criterion so that's everything i hope that you learned something new if you did please like the video if you still have questions ask these questions in the comments and if you feel that you need a little bit more support feel free to reach out through my website for a one-to-one -one lesson